Hello everyone, I hope that you're doing great. Today we want to identify structural groups or functional groups within amino acids. In a future lesson, we're going to talk about how to categorize amino acids in terms of if they are polar, nonpolar, basic, or acidic. But before we can go to that level, I believe it is very important for you to be able to identify the different groups of any given amino acid. Before I jump into that part, I just want to remind you that there are 20 naturally occurring amino acids. Now, let's, let us put the groups now in perspective. As a matter of fact, let's identify the groups first. And so, there are three groups that you need to know. All right, we have the amino group, which is NH2. All right, it is, this is also called the amine group. All right, or the amine group. Now, we also have the carboxyl group. The carboxyl group is COOH or C double bond OOH. The carboxyl group is an acidic structure, all right? And this is why it is called amino acid. But what is also important here to note is that the amino group and the carboxyl group, they are the two primary functional groups of an amino acid. Now we have the R group. R group varies and also determines the property of the amino acid. Now, what I want to point out here, or to kind of enhance your understanding, is that the R group is the only thing that is different between any given amino acid. So if you have two amino acids, the only thing that is different between them is really the R group. And also, a point to note is that all amino acid must contain one amino group and a carboxyl group. Again, the only difference between any given amino acid is the R group, all right? And so they have different properties based upon the R group. Now let's put the groups in perspective. And there's something I want to point out here that is very important. And so notice our NH2 on our left. So we have our NH2, which is our amino group or amine group. And then we have our carboxyl group, which is the COOH or the C double bond OOH on our right. Then we have our R group. Again, there's no part of the structure for the R group because the R group, depending on the amino acid, it is different from each other. All right. What I want to point out here, though, which is very, very important, is that the carboxyl group, the amino group, and the R group they all connect to the same carbon. That carbon is called, is called the alpha carbon. All right? So again, please make a note that the three groups, they are connected to the same carbon, which is the alpha carbon. Now let's look at an example. Here we have glutamine. Depend, depending on your pronunciation, if you're using the American pronunciation or the British pr pronunciation, it is glutamine or glutamine. And the other name for glutamine is the glutamic acid. Now, looking at this structure, let's identify the three groups. Now, if you notice carefully, we have two groups that look alike, which is the NH2, and those are the amino group. Now, an easy way out of this is to identify the carboxyl group. And notice the carboxyl group on the left. Now, what is very important as a concept is that the carboxyl group and the amino group must connect to the same carbon. So, therefore, the amino group on the top, that is a caric amino group. Why? Because it connects to the same carbon as the carboxyl group. Now, coincidentally, the remaining portion is the R group. So, R for remaining. It doesn't literally mean remaining. But easy way to remember is that the remaining portion is the R group. So look at this. The remaining portion that connects to the same carbon, that's the R group. Or otherwise called the side carbon chain or side chain. So now we have the three groups. All right, I want to point out something. This is not a part of this lesson for today. This is for the future lesson coming up. Is that if you notice in the R group here, we have NH2, which is an amine group. And that is why we have here glutamine. The amine part comes from the amino, the amino group or the amine group within the R group. All right. Again, we're going to talk about that in the future when we're categorizing 
the amino acids. All right, so let's jump to another example here. And you can pause and look at this, try it on your own, and see if you can identify the groups. Remember the concept. Now, again, if you look at this, you realize that there are two carboxyl groups. So there are two carboxyl groups. Now, which one is the correct one? We can only have one. And so looking at it carefully, we can now identify the amino group. So let's let us identify the amino group, which is on the left, NH2. And so the correct carboxyl group must be connected to the same carbon as the amino group. And so therefore, the carboxyl group on the top, it is the correct one. So the remaining portion that connects to the same carbon, the remaining portion at the bottom right there connects to the same carbon, is the R group. So a rule of thumb is that when you finish draw, um, identifying the groups, you should always have the carbon leave by itself with all its three groups connected to. And then we have this little H by itself here, right? Now, this amino acid is aspartic acid, okay? Again, it is acidic in nature because of the R group is acidic because of the COOH, all right? Again, we talk about that later in the next lesson. Now, for a final example, it's a little bit different from the previous two. So the first, before I get into identifying the groups, I just want to point out something here, is that where lines meet, which is a vertex, a carbon is actually there, okay? So we can talk about that again at the next time, but just to, for this lesson particularly, just to make a note that wherever lines meet, a carbon is there. All right, so this is arginine or arginine. Again, depends on the pronunciation that you um, use. And so here we have two NH2. So let's identify the two NH2 first. So we need to figure out which one is the correct one. Again, go back to basic concept. The amino group must connect to the same carbon as the carboxyl group. So let's, let us look for the carboxyl group, okay? So the carboxyl group is on top there over to the right. So therefore, the amino group at the bottom right is the correct amino group, all right? And so again, the remaining portion is the R group, all right? So here we have our R group, all remaining portion to the left, all right? So I hope this was really easy for you in terms of understanding it, all right? And if you have any problems or any questions regarding, please let me know in the comment section, all right? And so at this point, I want to thank you for watching this lesson, and I want to remind you that you have many parts, but you are one body. So what this really means in that is, is that we all have a role to play in the grand scheme of things. So even look at your body itself, different parts, but they play a specific role to make your entire body function. Life itself needs all of us to play our role to make life worthwhile. So again, I thank you for watching, and I want you to have a blessed and wonderful day, and I will catch up with you very soon.